Welcome back, everybody. Today, you're growing with Ben again. We're gonna do something a little bit different today. Usually, I take you guys through a brew process on one of my one of my rigs. That's not what we're gonna do today. I got a bunch of videos already out on brewing, so uh, that's been established. I want to take you through what I've been working on the past couple of weeks is my first clone brew. I'm not following someone else's recipe to make this clone brew. I had to develop it because there's not one out there. It's a local beer. I don't think they distribute outside my area. So we're still going to brew. I'm almost at a boil already, but I'm going to take you through what the malt bill looks like, the, the different yeast I, I'm using. Not completely shooting in the dark on the yeast. I think I got a good idea what it's going to be. However, I'm going to try four different yeasts. So you see I got my four fermenters ready to go. Uh, I'm going to take you through all that. So keep watching. So this beer is a, it's called Albino Monkey. It's a, it's a Belgian white ale. Again, it's a local beer. It's very tasty. It's a, it's low IBU, has a really nice flavor to it. Nothing overpowering. Um, just a really clean, uh, low, low alcohol percentage beer. This is my first clone brew, or at least first recipe design of a clone brew that I've made. I've been brewing since 2003, give or take, off and on. I've had a couple gaps in there just with, you know, life. Have yet to actually just design a clone brew recipe. I've done some recipes, but not a clone brew, trying to actually target like a specific beer off the shelf. So again, this is a local beer. You can get it around here. I searched for clone brews online, clone brew recipes. Nothing out there, so I was like, well, what the heck, I'll go for it. So I'm gonna take you through basically what's off their website. I'm gonna read a couple things. I think I'm gonna pull some stuff up on the computer monitor as well and take you through so the video might jump back and forth. But the goal is, I have my recipe design. I'm gonna show you guys what the, what the recipe looks like. I'm gonna take you through how I came to design that recipe, what, what fed into that, brew it, pitch my four yeast, keg it, and then go ahead and follow that on with a, a taste test to see where I'm at. I think I'm gonna be in the ballpark. I got a pretty good feeling about it, so uh, I'm really excited. I'm almost out of boil here, and you know, if I'm not watching it, things gonna boil over in the background here, so. Not a lot of headspace on this this kettle, but it, it does work. You just gotta be keep an eye on it. Just a boil for bittering. This will be one ounce of Hallerkoff. So again, if you if you look at this beer on their off their website, and I'm just gonna read some of this, okay. It's 5% alcohol, 25 IBU. So like I was saying, really low alcohol, um, low bitterness, Belgian style white ale, coriander, orange peels, lemon peels, white pepper, and Virginia wildflower honey. It goes on to say some other stuff, but even just reading that, that's, that's a lot of stuff happening in this beer. They pull it off brilliantly. It, it is a very delicious beer. I hope I can get it. So coming off that, and this is this is what I pulled off of tasting it, the nose on it, it has that Belgian funk, and given that they're saying it's Belgian ale, I'm figuring it's some type of Belgian strain for yeast. It does have a slightly alcoholic nose to it uh, and, and kind of taste. I'm really thinking it's a Belgian Abbey, uh, a Y yeast 1214 yeast. Um, I get a little bit of tart out of it. I'm gonna I'm gonna figure that out hopefully between the four yeasts that I pitch. The taste uh, slightly sweet, so that's more than likely from the honey. Subtle spice, notable but not overpowering. It's not in your face. Uh, again, there's a lot going on in this recipe. They have there is a uh, white pepper in there, orange peel, lemon peel, along with the honey. They blend together very well, so. It's just what quantities is that going to look like in the recipe. It has good bitterness. It's noticeable. I'm, even though it's only 25 IBU, I think they get some of that too from the bitter orange peel. Mouthfeel. 
I don't have that uh, that thicker, creamy flavor, so I don't think that they used flaked wheat or flaked oats or anything. It seems really light, so I think they just went with Pilsner wheat, and then uh, on my recipe, I threw in a little bit of Vienna. It is kind of dry, so mash temp, I'm, I'm shooting for 148 to 150. Um, my conclusion, it's a wheat base, definitely a wheat base. It's a variant of a Belgian yeast. Lower mash temp, 148 to 150. You can definitely taste the honey. Low quantities of coriander and white pepper. This is where I started with the recipe design. This is right off their website. I know some of this is redundant, but again, 5% alcohol, 25 IBU. You can see here they, they do list off the ingredients, definitely not in quantities or hops or anything like that. Belgian style white ale with coriander, orange peel, lemon peel, white pepper, and wildflower honey. Knowing this, my takeaways were this is similar to like a Belgian wit, where I know it's going to be a wheat malt base. I, for coriander, not knowing exactly what type of quantity and everything, I do have a solid Blue Moon clone, which has a small addition of coriander. I use coriander seed at 1.7 grams. Being that in my tasting notes it wasn't an in-your-face flavor with a coriander, that's what I chose to start with. I've never brewed with lemon peels, and being that they also left orange peels in their recipe, I'm guessing that since lemon peel is more like your, your sweet citrus, uh, I take that as that is also like the, your sweet orange peel, which in you know, like a Belgian wit you would do a bitter, bitter orange peel addition along with a sweet orange peel addition. So in my recipe, I do bitter orange along with the lemon peels. White pepper, I've never brewed with that before. I had no idea what type of quantity to start with. I found a couple of Saison recipes that were suggesting two teaspoons with a five minute addition. So that's where I started. It's gonna get me in the range that I need and I'll know if I need to add to or take away from based on my tasting notes. So you look at these were my tasting notes. Uh, which is how I came to look at these these four yeasts. It does have the Belgian funk. I do get the alcoholic kind of flavor. I know a lot of Saisons com complement white pepper with recipes, so it could be a Saison too, but I really do think it's the Belgian Abbey. These are the four yeasts that I chose to go with. I think it's going to be a good start. If it's not one of these, it's at least going to narrow it down rapidly, trying to do four beers at one time. And then here's the recipe laid out. I brought it right to the 5% alcohol, 25 IBUs. I'll talk about the color later in the video here. I think this is a good start. It's it's That's pretty normal for, for a wheat. Again, I do think it's it was a little dry, so I'm going to try 148 mash temp. This is on my 8-gallon Brunebags system. Just a very straight, simple wheat malt base. The Halletaw is a, is a pretty good guess. That's what I use my Belgian wit for bittering. Uh, that's actually the only hop I use. So I think this is a, a good start. You see my other additions here. I ended up actually weighing out my white peppercorn just uh, the way it ground out. And then here's the yeast. It does have a, a honey addition, so I, I throw that in right at the end of the boil, and I use one pound. Quantity is a guess. Usually a pound's pretty pretty common, so this is the recipe all laid out. We'll go through this. I'm gonna have my additions here. We are we'll brew this out. I'll show going into the fermenter and stuff. I've wanted to to brew a a wheat beer variant with multiple strains for the longest time. Doing a wheat beer, I mean, like so many beers, a yeast can really change the, you can have the same exact recipe and throw in a different yeast and get a, a, a not completely different beer, but, but drastically different beer. So uh, it's exciting to be able to try that off of the, the same exact brew, uh, the same exact base recipe. 
Uh, originally, I was going to do this on my larger, because I, I have a 22-gallon kettle for my pot and cooler uh, setup. I was going to try to pull off a, a basically a triple batch, a three six-gallon batches. Being that I don't know exactly how this is going to turn out, I think that uh, I'm going to do it small scale. So I'm going to just do a six gallon batch. I'm going to split them between four fermenters. Should be about a gallon and a half. I'm going to lose a little bit to trube, but it's enough to be able to taste. And if it's a, if I really don't like the flavor of it, it's not that much beer to get through. Although I love giving my beer to friends and stuff, I don't want to give away six gallons if I don't like it. And then you got to bottle it for them and everything, and I, I'm not doing all that. So we're going to keep it small, low scale. So again, talking about yeasts, coming back to wheat ales or Belgian wits, I have found that those are the beers that have the, the, most, the most impact with the type of yeast. Like you could use just basically the same base malt and... and and then it's it's all the yeast. There's so much flavor out of that beer that it really makes the beer of what it is. I want to say when I did finally nailed my Belgian wit, wit recipe that I really like, I had went through pretty much you know what your your WLP 400, what's a 3942 I think oh, that's off the top of my head for Y yeast and just their straight Belgian wit strain. I mean I tried all of them five six uh, between both you know both labs. Uh, before I finally got, it's like this is it. This is this is the flavor that I'm looking for. So yeast today that I've decided to go with on this, the Y yeast Belgian Belgian Abbey, the 1214 strain, the Y yeast French saison 3711, the Y yeast 3787, the Trappist uh, high gravity, and then the White Labs Belgian saison 565. I do know some of these Saison yeasts get a little bit finicky. You have to start at like a, you know, 70 to 75 temp, somewhere in there, and then you want to ramp it up even like into the 80s. Uh, they even recommend possibly pitching a, you know, like a 1056 or a WP001 in order to go ahead and, and finish the, the fermentation off. Because um, fermenting, most of your flavors and everything are all done in the first couple days of fermenting anyways. But going through this again, the way, how I came to these four yeasts that I wanted to try. Again, I still think it's the Belgian Abbey, just by the, you know, the alcoholic flavor, the Belgian funk. I know it's definitely a Belgian yeast. It could be a Saison, uh, which would complement the pepper in the yeast very nicely. And then I've done the Trappist High Gravity. That has a little bit of a, you know, the Belgian flavor to it, not as much. Uh, between the four though, we're gonna get this all done. I'm gonna let it uh, ferment out, keg it, let it refine out, let it age. There's a lot of stuff going into this beer. It's it's gonna take it's gonna take some time to culminate and really get to where it needs to be to have an accurate taste testing. But I'm gonna follow that on too, so so we can see how accurate this is. For 20 minutes, we're gonna do another 0.75 ounces of powder cloth. I don't really talk about color yet either. I'm not as good as pulling that yet. This is going to be an extremely light beer, which is fine. Uh, I do think I'm a little bit light on that. It's okay. They might have used like a Kara wheat or did like a, a really light Kara, like a C10 or C20 edition to add a little bit in there, but we'll see how it turns out when it's all done side by side. Also note, so water profile, which is extremely important. I spoke about it before I got, actually, I take that back. Pretty much all of my brewing videos speak to water profile. I have one specifically for making water adjustments. Uh, so using Palmer's easy water calculator on this, uh, like with all my wheat beers, this is an extremely light beer. So. I wanted a balanced profile and I brought, I don't want a lot of calcium chloride and a lot of gypsum in there because uh, I don't really want that to add to the flavor of the beer at all. I just want to add it enough to get my calcium up to 100 parts per million 
for, for the yeast. With this, I did five grams of gypsum, four grams of calcium chloride, two grams of Epsom salt, and since it is such a light beer, I had to do three milliliters of lactic acid in order for my mash pH. Love making beer. Love drinking beer too. 15 minute work lock edition. Just hit five minutes. A lot more going on now. I need to add white pepper, my lemon peel, and my orange peel. Uh, some people have really fancy contraptions to do this. I just use a, a bag. You definitely don't want to just throw this stuff in the in the boil. I've done it. it, it plugs up your pump and every other thing. It's just, it never works well. Some white pepper. I could probably just throw that in. It's really not a big deal, but since I got the bag in with this bowl, wow, that smells amazing. I really think in this brew too, this, the, the white pepper addition is, is what gives it that real distinct flavor. I don't think it's the Saison yeast. I'm going to prep the honey. If you're watching this, you probably brewed ex extract, so I got to get that honey warmed up so it pours well here. And we're really coming down to it, so I'm going to get my chiller sanitized and all that good jazz. So we're about a minute away from the end of boil. Chillers in there sanitizing. You you want to pitch your honey right at the end of the boil or like a minute left on the boil to try to preserve as much flavor of it as you can. I tasted this wildflower honey. It is, it is amazing. I brewed with orange blossom for Wits or Belgian Wits. Great, you know, clove honey. This has got a real nice, I don't know how to describe it. I'm not a cook or anything. I'm not, I'm, I'm no... Gordon Ramsay or anything, it's, it's got a real nice flavor to it. I'm excited to see how this turns out. Right at the end of the boil, I'm just going to run it through my pump a little bit so that sanitizes. I wish I had just a little bit more on there, but I'm going to go with it. Very chilly outside, so this should this should not take long at all. Lid on here. I am gonna want to take a gravity reading with this Belgian yeast or the Belgian saison yeast, which is two of the strains I'm using, being finicky and not finishing out. I really want to take a, a gravity reading so I know if the fermentation is complete. Just let that sit. And... Exactly how much is 1.5 gallons, but we're going for it. Fine, it's 
all that. The Great Experiment. Four yeasts, one man, one brew. Oh wow. There's not a lot of beer in these things. That's it. As far as splitting it, I think I did really good. That is not a lot of beer in each one of these. But we're committed now, so. I'm still gonna oxygenate the, the wort on all of these. Uh, we'll talk about the yeast and pitching rates and everything here in a second. We get this done. I'm not going to pitch my yeast yet just because I don't want to cross contaminate yeast at all. Let's get all my vials and everything sanitized as best as possible. Everything sanitized here. Belgian Saison. Okay, so closing out, see I got everything in the four fermenters, everything's labeled as it should be. Yes, I'm missing a, a bung. I'll have to get one. I taped it off right now, which I've done in a jam before, so it's going to drive enough CO2 up that shouldn't be an issue. Takeaways from this, I think if I do this again, since I do have such a, a low volume in here, which seemed like it would be good, but I'm looking at the bottom of this, it's gonna be really tough to get what I need into the keg. Enough for what I'm trying to accomplish, which is basically tasting. But more than likely, if I wanna still split between four batches, I'll probably do it in my, my larger setup, which does 12 gallons. Then I could divide that up if I did four, it'd be three gallons a piece, I think that'd be ideal. So, you know, in retrospect, I think that would be a good option. You did see I had four yeasts. I direct pitched the, the 565 from White Labs, the two Y yeasts, and then I, I had a yeast starter actually for, I had a yeast starter for the 3787 Travis High Gravity. That was an old yeast I had in the fridge, so I definitely wanted to, to get it going in a yeast starter, but essentially all these with such a, a low work volume, I'm over pitching. Yes, I know I'm over pitching. Yes, I know that can impact flavor. I could try to scale it out and just try to pitch a number of yeast cells. I'm not gonna go into all that. I direct pitched it. It should still give me what I need out of this, this taste test, this little experiment. So, so if you like what you've seen here today, hit like and subscribe. Follow up, I'm gonna do a taste test video just straight on, on this little experiment and we'll see how it all turned out.
Thanks for watching.